Good morning, everybody. Greetings from the Association of Schools of Public Health in the European Region. Uh, my name's John Middleton. I'm the current president, and it's my pleasure to be here. Sir Richard Dole famously said that dying young as old as possible should be our objective. Um, he was a part of an era in which uh, uh, there was a view that we'd conquered communicable disease uh, and that the same logic, the same rationale, the same science uh, would help us identify the risks of non-communicable disease uh, and overcome those. However, in the uh, more recent times, we've come to realise that um, not only is there a great health inequality, but there's also uh, an inequality in how our later lives are lived out. These graphs from uh, Sir Michael Marmot's work in Inequalities in England show on this one the male life expectancy for all of the neighbourhood areas in England um, and the higher band is inequality in life expectancy. Uh, as we get to the least deprived areas, uh, life expectancy rises to about 85 uh, and uh, in the most deprived areas there it's lower than 65. So um, that is life expectancy in general and healthy life expectancy is actually much worse. Uh, and the inequalities between rich and poor are very much worse as well. So you see that on the left of the screen, most deprived areas, life, healthy life expectancy is only 48 uh, and it rises to about 75 for the least deprived areas. So not only is there a difference between uh, healthy life expectancy and life expectancy, it applies more unequally across the social gradient. Uh, and these are the real challenges today for uh, healthy ageing. Uh, what they mean in practice on the uh, most deprived end of the scale, people expecting to be breathless at the age of 45, people expecting uh, to have chest pain as normal. And um, this is what we've seen in certain uh, areas of where I used to work as Director of Public Health in Sandwell. Uh, for women, those differences in England are even greater. Uh, and uh, uh, they suggest a great challenge for us. The, um, uh, in recent studies, the inequalities in life expectancy between uh, men and women, and particularly uh, for women in the north of England, uh, life expectancy is going down. So uh, this is part of a picture of austerity. Another part of that picture is the diseases of despair. This is the American study of Case and Deaton. Uh, and we see those diseases of austerity, d diseases of extreme despair and, uh, and loss of hope. Uh, as reflected in alcohol, uh, diabetes and obesity perhaps, and uh, poisonings uh, and uh, lung cancer. Um, where I used to work as Director of Public Health for 27 years, a place called Sandwell in the West Midlands of England, uh, a highly deprived post-industrial area with large inequalities in health, multicultural community, and um, in my very first annual report, I suggested that it's not who your doctor is, it's who you vote for that most affects your health. And uh, that um, the idea that healthy public policy can have the biggest influence on how well people stay through their lives, I think is still a very important one. Um, much of our um, uh, ill health related to that post-industrial period 88 scrapyards, 21 foundries, and uh, out of that post-industrial uh, wasteland uh, has come a resurgence of renewal and uh, regeneration uh, through a lot of civic effort, uh, new leisure centres replacing the foundry site. Um, but at the same time, we continued to see our detractors, this 
report from Amanda Platell for the Daily Mail, who made an unannounced visit to Sandwell, described us as sat, fat central. Now, uh, uh, it's true that uh, obesity is a major problem uh, in post-industrial areas, but did she find the real culprit? Um, this analysis might suggest something different. Ten major companies that control most of what we eat. Uh, and if you think individual solutions to healthy eating are going to work, uh, then you need to think again uh, and direct our attention to those major sources of ill health that need to be regulated, taxed and controlled. Um, at the same time as the uh, tobacco industry was developing its own responses to Sir Richard Dole's uh, studies. Um, all of these food companies now have their merchants of doubt, their people who are uh, casting doubts on scientific evidence. And indeed, we see that uh, use of uh, doubt uh, to feed the world of fake news, the world of anti-vax and so on. Uh, and we need to be very conscious of that and its power, particularly in the era of social media. So uh, what would a public health approach to a healthy ageing look like? Good data to describe the health of older people and propose solutions and evaluate written interventions. Knowledge of major causes of ill health and dependency and inequality. Uh, major, uh, a thorough understanding of uh, major causes of ill health and particularly its social origins, poor environments, poor housing, poor income, uh, and poor life chances. So uh, these are things that relate to a life course approach to uh, healthy ageing. Um, healthy environments, there's been a lot of interest in accessibility of cities, dementia friendly cities. Um, healthy cities has been around for a very long time. Um, and safer cities is another idea around how all of them have the same uh, desire and need to involve town planners to change the urban environment towards a more healthy uh, and more accessible format. We see um, through the International Alzheimer's Association, the uh, Dementia Friendly Initiative um, and uh, some uh, an English initiative, the uh, uh, Town Planning Institute uh, looking at ways in which uh, physical environments can be accessible, uh, address the needs of carers and people with dementia and be easily be negotiated, be recognisable, distinctive, comfortable and safe. Uh, and um, the European Union through its uh, Access City Awards has sought to uh, create uh, more accessibility as well. This is Breeder in Holland, who were the 2019 recipients. Um, but environments also internal to people's houses. The, uh, uh, this was our 2004 manifesto on smart housing, use of new technologies to enable people with disabilities not to be handicapped. Uh, in uh, 2007 to 2013, we commissioned uh, what we called the Eye House, which was showing how you could retrofit a hundred year old house uh, to make it accessible, to fit it with uh, modern technology that could be um, easily accessed from uh, 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 local suppliers. Uh, and indeed it was a showcase for local industry. Uh, and in that sense, it was using the health service as an economic regenerator. So what else is there about healthy ageing? Well, it requires strong community involvement, citizen-led activities, support to enable communities to lead and to govern themselves, uh, resources for uh, optimal ageing uh, and intergenerational activities, um, and perhaps also social prescribing, which I'll come on to later. People need to be seen as assets for health improvement for themselves and their community, not as problems to be treated. Um, and for example, community assets that we have, libraries, leisure centres, open space. Um, libraries have been particularly important in Sanwell as a vehicle, not just for borrowing books, but as a place 
uh, a real community centre um, and uh, this particular uh, picture of making a friend at your local library uh, we all know that isolation and loneliness is becoming a major problem of older life uh, and something which uh, health services are beginning to address. Uh, leisure centres, uh, this is the Portway Centre in uh, Old Bree in, West, in uh, Sandwell. Um, a huge effort to be inclusive in ages, in disabilities uh, and uh, ethnicity. Um, and uh, these facilities are a major source, a major resource for health, a major asset. Um, stride walks, a huge program of uh, volunteer-led walks uh, in the open spaces of Sandwell, uh, and indeed um, very uh, powerful movement now, the uh, stride walks and uh, uh, active, active leisure, uh, very important across the world. Uh, this is uh, Salop Drive's Community Agriculture Project, uh, taking on uh, uh, derelict land and turning it for community uh, food production. Again, a major resource for local people. Ideal for All was the independent living centre originally formed and managed and owned by disabled people. Um, now a more collaborative venture with the council perhaps, but nevertheless uh, the principle that uh, people with disabilities know what their problems are, know how to deal with them uh, and are able to give informed expert uh, advice and uh, information. Um, this is AgeWell, a, a body that's been in existence for over 20 years, um, but um, now it's a community interest company representing older people, advocating for them, and indeed providing services as well. So um, in addition to community involvement, uh, there is a need for personal resources, uh, how to help individuals to uh, achieve better health, and how it includes health information, education, health literacy, uh, health promoting activities, uh, health activity on the net, uh, and uh, use of various new micro technologies. Keeping people mobile for as long as possible um, is uh, a vital uh, activity to um, keep people from becoming frail in, in older life. And this is something which um, Muir Gray has been very uh, influential on in his thinking about activity therapy, uh, the walking cure. Uh, this is no longer just about getting you five lots of uh, uh, activity every week uh, just to stay, um, keep your heart healthy. This is about avoiding frailty in a later life and at some point um, just walking to the toilet may become uh, a sign of activity that's relevant to a, a very elderly person, uh, something that um, staving off uh, dependence on somebody else uh, by the very by gentle exercise routines and so on so uh, a vital aspect of preventing frailty and um, so there's the uh, living longer better uh, initiative of Muir Gray um, and the activity therapy uh, initiative um, Muir Gray has also been active himself in the uh, uh, encouraging people to do their gentle exercises at home during the period of lockdown uh, but he's not, I think he would admit, been as successful as this man. Uh, Joe Wicks's YouTube uh, videos uh, of gentle exercise for older people and more vigorous ones for slightly more older people, younger people. Um, these are um, uh, a real uh, cult now and uh, Joe has become a, something of a lockdown hero. Um, social prescribing actually bridges the gap between community and personal. Um, and uh, it's something of a vogue in the UK at the moment um, and where it gets away from uh, simple sort of life coach physical activity um, it does represent the chance for more appropriate care so welfare benefits advice in general practice has been extremely successful in helping people with things that they turn up for um, advice, that they, that their admission ticket to the general practice is 
a mental problem, an anxiety problem, when actually what they need is advice about where to increase their income and how they uh, get their benefits entitlements. Uh, social prescribing can also be complementary care and uh, libraries again have been very influential over the years. Uh, the Books on Prescription initiative, uh, not just now a, a local initiative but certainly UK libraries uh, are very involved in providing and helping people to get to literature on health and well-being. Uh, this is the Sandwell Fire Service in action. Um, the Sandwell Hub is a major resource for home safety institutions uh, and for prevent preventing falls and accidents at home, uh, but so much more in regard to stop smoking services or uh, pointers for uh, caring relationships, for prevention of domestic violence, a whole raft of services and something like 40 agencies now working with the Sandwell Hub and the fire services uh, and indeed fire services across the UK are very active in promoting health uh, and improving people's uh, home conditions. There's a few of the Sandwell Hub partner services there. So um, with that personal development, people also uh, can um, le earn skills for themselves. They can uh, get their uh, cardiovascular um, resuscitation training certificates. They can get practical knowledge to share with their communities, uh, better references for jobs and training qualifications, perhaps. Um, but then there's also the role of the health service in uh, pr promoting healthy ageing. Uh, it should be needs-led, it should be person-centred, uh, it should involve individuals and carers in decisions about their care, uh, and it should be geared to prevention and early intervention so that people can do things, uh, not uh, professionals doing what they must do. Community-supported activities, uh, and in, when we come to clinical and social care, uh, we need value-based interventions. We need uh, initiatives like the recent uh, European Commission uh, value-based uh, interventions programme uh, that reported last year. It's also vital that health service are self-critical, that we use clinical audit, that we use evaluation, and that we do appropriate research on questions that we don't know the answers to. Uh, and all in all, we need to see co-production of health where people, we as professionals, are professionals on tap, not on top, uh, and that uh, people, individuals, carers, are actively involved in the decisions about their health and their social care. Um, in the UK, it's been a particularly important debate, or in England particularly, about uh, the need for a universal social care system. Um, Covid uh, pandemic has shown up uh, huge weaknesses in how we plan and deliver health and care uh, and this may well be the case in many other countries too. Now even in the end of life there is a role for public health community and um, this idea of the compassionate community as uh, promoted by uh, Professor Alan Keller here I think is really important the actual opportunities for professionals to be involved in end-of-life care are really quite marginal when you compare with the time that carers, uh, friends, neighbours, others need and can be involved. Uh, and we need to see a movement of uh, uh, communities being not afraid to talk about death and dying and willing to be actively involved in care and support for uh, people who are dying or people who are bereaved uh, after those uh, after the death of a, a loved one. Um, another aspect where um, uh, health services can contribute uh, is the idea of a health dividend. Uh, this is the corporate citizenship role of health services uh, and uh, how they can contribute to a local economic benefit. So uh, in the, the King's Fund in 2002, uh, promoted this idea of claiming the health benefit, uh, health dividend. How do uh, health services as employers, uh, travel uh, users, 
uh, producers of waste, consumers of energy, local procurement of services. How can health services be better involved in the local community? Um, the Midland Metropolitan Hospital, which has been much delayed in recent times, um, offers uh, local employment, both in construction and through uh, training for services in the uh, health care. It also offers uh, a prospect of a low carbon footprint um, and uh, better uh, relocation of uh, health, uh, key workers into the area. This example from Stoke in the north of uh, the Midlands of England, uh, saving lives with solar. The roof of the uh, obstetric unit's been turned over to generating solar power. Uh, the money that generates then gets ploughed back into uh, an affordable warmth service for older people attending uh, the uh, clinics and being admitted to hospital and, and gives people a chance to have a, uh, uh, an assessment of the affordability of their warmth in their own homes and hopefully that thermal comfort will then prevent further hospital admission. So the um, challenges also for public health teaching and learning in the new era in a paper I published in 2016 called ISIS Crop Failure and No Antibiotics, I suggested we need a much wider public understanding and desire for public health. Uh, we've seen that surge of literacy in epidemiology in the recent pandemic. Um, but we also, in our professional work, need to speak new languages and build new partnerships international lawyers, political scientists, climate scientists, ecologists, theologians, all of these people need to be uh, people that we deal with, that we talk with and we build partnerships with. Um, we need to acknowledge that uh, idea of co-producing public health uh, with the public. It's not surrendering expertise, it's sharing it. Um, and we need to be able to challenge fake news, populism, and harness social media and new communications uh, for our benefit uh, and for the benefit of the wider public. And we need to reassert our values, which should include uh, respect, dignity, compassion, autonomy of individuals, equality, fairness, and solidarity. Uh, and we need to respect and value people who work with older people. So um, summarising the change in our, uh, our outcomes and the, our focus, um, health is to disease as independence is to care, access is to transport, safety is to policing and sustainability is to environmental protection. The words that we tend to deal with more are those of our professions and our services um, health, independence, access, safety and sustainability are the goals that we should be aiming for. And finally, um, a healthy ageing society is an intergenerational society. It's one that respects, acknowledges and values young and old alike uh, and creates a better future uh, for all our generations to come. Thank you.